In the middle of what was meant to be a peaceful holiday after a busy schedule, Matthew Broderick and Jennifer Grey were involved in a fatal car accident that claimed the lives of two women. Since the accident, Broderick and Grey have struggled with it and hardly ever discuss it publicly. In this video, we will closely examine what happened on the day of this unfortunate incident and the subsequent events. So that you don't miss anything, pay attention. First up, what happened to Matthew Broderick and Jennifer Grey? The two actors who starred in the classic 80s film Ferris Bueller's Day Off have both enjoyed successful careers since the movie's release. However, their lives have been very different. Matthew Broderick and Jennifer Grey, lovers at the time, were traveling through Northern Ireland together on holiday. The journey was meant to be a break for them both, as Broderick has just finished producing Biloxi Blues, and Grey had just finished making her publicity rounds for the upcoming release of Dirty Dancing. On August 5th, they began their trip from Irvinstown to Maguire's Bridge. During the trip, the couple found themselves strange on several occasions. They made their initial stop at a gas station to ask for directions when it started to rain, and after waiting for the rain to subside, they resumed their trip. While driving, the rain started again and they stopped at another gas station to wait it out again. Finally, the couple lost again. They made another stop outside Enniskillen. Here, they approached an off-duty police officer for directions. When the man was aware of their plans, he probably informed the couple that the planned route was dangerous and offered them an alternative that would be better given the bad weather conditions. Sadly, Broderick had no intention of changing his route, and he started driving again in the same direction. The officer followed them for a few miles and said that Broderick was driving at moderate speed. He estimated he was driving around 40 miles per hour. However, Broderick swerved into the opposite lane and crashed the car in a head-on collision with an oncoming vehicle. So what happened after the fatal collision? The collision was violent, and all four victims were taken immediately to earn hospital for medical attention. Regrettably, Margaret and Anna both passed away at the hospital. Broderick and Gray were fortunate enough to live despite escaping the fatal car collision with injuries. Broderick had a concussion, a broken leg, many broken ribs, and a cut-up face from the windows shattering. A local firefighter revealed that in order to provide the American with first aid, they had to rip a side of his car away. For almost a month, Broderick received hospital treatment. It seemed Gray had survived the collision relatively safely, but she later explained that the collision was so intense that ligaments were cut off from the back of her neck, and she had an intense headache for four days. Her injuries from the collision made her eventually need spinal surgery. People wanted an explanation for this tragic event because they assumed there must have been some unknown cause for the fatal collision. When Gray was questioned about what had happened years later, she answered that Matthew was a great driver and that nobody was drinking. Broderick was prosecuted for reckless driving and entered a guilty plea. A prison term of 10 years may be for such an offense, with 5 years for each death caused by accident. However, Broderick got off rather lightly. He had to pay a $175 fee to be allowed to return to the US. And now, what happened to Matthew Broderick afterwards? Few people in Hollywood ever managed to capture the popularity wave that Broderick served for the better two decades. He did, however, begin to make fewer and fewer movie appearances as the 20th century came to a close, and when he did, the caliber of his work wasn't up to pace with what he had previously done. Here are some of the highs and lows Matthew Broderick has seen throughout his career. Broderick had to climb the ladder just like other actors. He didn't merely appear on the Hollywood scene as a well-known figure, he enrolled in the HB studio where he started his acting career. According to the Los Angeles Times, Broderick landed his first role on Horton Foote's On Valentine's Day Workshop Production. Later, he contributed to Harvey Firestein's Torch Song Trilogy. Broderick was swiftly accepted into Broadway due to a favorable review from Mel Gasow of the New York Times Theatrical Critic, and his life was never the same after that. In the middle of the 1980s, Broderick was establishing himself as a big figure in the theater world after being cast as Eugene Morris Jerome in Neil Simon's Eugene Trilogy. He even won his first two Tony Award nominations for Best Featured Actor in a Play for his work in Brighton Beach Memoirs for an aspiring actor. The sky was absolutely the limit and a move to film seemed all but inevitable. Next, will Matthew ever meet with the victims' families? Broderick didn't immediately contact the loved ones of the two women whose lives were lost after being dis 
discharge from the hospital. There was a note from him after the accident expressing his condolences, but no other communication according to the women's family. In 2002, 15 years after the incident, it was said that Broderick would try to contact the family on a trip to Ireland the following year. Martin Doherty, a son to one of the two women and brother to the other, was eager to speak with Broderick. He claimed that Broderick didn't intentionally kill his mother and sister. Martin Doherty had tremendous emotions at the time, however, he has now forgiven Broderick and doesn't have any resentment toward him. Broderick acknowledged how difficult it had been for him to accept what had occurred and said he had sought therapy to help him cope. The meeting, however, is said to have never happened. In fact, Broderick faced harsh backlash for appearing in a multi-million dollar Super Bowl advertisement for Honda in 2012, a decision many deemed to be callous. The two had not yet met, according to Doherty, who claimed that the actor wasn't the best choice of drivers, considering his record. He also recognized that he might find some closure for his encounter with Broderick. He stated that there has always been something in the back of his mind. In County Donegal, Ireland, Broderick and his wife, the Sex and the City actress Sarah Jessica Parker, have a vacation home. So, was Ferris Bueller's Day Off a blessing or a curse to Matthew Broderick? After earning a few smaller roles, Broderick took on the lead role in John Hughes' 1986 classic Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Younger viewers connected with his portrayal of the carefree, lazy adolescent. It was an overwhelming box office and critical hit. Considering the film's popularity, Broderick's performance in Ferris Bueller became his signature role, but it wasn't without its long-term problems. It can be challenging to move on from one particular role that made you famous in the eyes of fans when you become successful so quickly. Just ask Robert Pattinson, who is only now shedding his Edward Cullen reputation after starring in the film The Batman. Broderick repeatedly tried to break out of his Ferris Bueller persona with the general public, but he never quite succeeded. One of his biggest successes was how to succeed in business without really trying, which earned him his second Tony Award. He had achieved significant success with the stage production of The Producers in 2001 and the film adaptation in 2005 at the turn of the century. He received yet another Tony nomination for the musical, but Nathan Lane, who portrayed his co-star, took home the prize. Nevertheless, what matters more than any accolade or prize in the world is that he was actively involved in what he cared about. And finally, where is Matthew Broderick now? In 2019, Broderick worked in London's West End for the first time in the production of The Starry Messenger. He continues to perform primarily on stage, according to the New York Times. He and his wife of 23 years Sarah Jessica Parker, who he had met via their shared love of theater, will co-star in Neil Simon's Plaza Suite in 2021. Due to the demanding planning that goes into such a production, Broderick hasn't been able to commit to many large blockbusters and or long-running television shows, but that doesn't mean that he isn't working on a number. With an average of two to three credits per year, he still makes appearances in various comedic movies, such as Trainwreck, To Dust, and Lazy Susan. However, he works far more frequently on television because he usually only makes makes brief guest appearances. He performed in a number of other shows in 2019, including Rick and Morty, Saturday Night Live, and 10 episodes of the Netflix post-apocalyptic comedy Daybreak. He also provided the voice for the animated series. Broderick hasn't exactly been making headlines like his Ferris Bueller days, but it doesn't change the fact that he hasn't vanished, as seen by his busy schedule across almost all visual mediums. That's it, folks. You've made it to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and keep up to date with our news. Kindly drop a like and subscribe. It means so much to us. Oh, and turn on post notifications. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll see you in the next video.